Hello and welcome back to the channel. So I have just bought a TDR Eco Clever disc resurfacing machine, which is one of the best machines that money can buy, and it wasn't cheap. Oh hell no! I've been wanting one for ages now, and I've been saving up little bits of money here and there to try and buy one. But I thought it's going to take me ages to save up for one because they are very expensive. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to whack it on a credit card and get one. It's going to be a massive asset to my business. I'm super excited to get it up and running. So let's get into it. Okay, so here it is. It's coming in a nice big strong box. So let's get this open and see what we've got inside. It's a little bit bigger than I was expecting. So this is a reconditioned unit. They had one left in stock. So I thought I better buy it before someone else does. But we've got a nice little user guide there with instructions. Now to buy one of these brand new is probably about twice the price of what I paid. So I'm hoping a reconditioned one will be just as good as a new one. Seems to be very well packaged. Uh, what we've got in here, I'm not sure what that is. We've got some, I think those are the pads, the sanding pads. A little water bottle there. I think you need to put distilled water in this, which I don't have, so I'll have to get some. What's in this? So in here we've got the polishing compound and water additive. And then we've got a load of different pads in there. I think it says that that's enough to do about 250 discs. We've got a power cable, brand new in the packet. And then we've got, what's this? I think that's a little cloth for wiping the disc down afterwards. Disc cleaning spray. Yeah, I think once they're done, they come out with like residue on them. So. I think that's just to get it off. Right, now we need to get this out. It looks like it's gonna be quite heavy. Uh, just lift that out. And then we've got a tube. I think that's a drainage tube. And that is the disc cleaner. I must say, Looks like it's in really good condition, to be honest, considering it is a used unit. Now, I haven't decided where I'm going to put this yet, but I was hoping that that would maybe fit inside one of my units here in my testing station, either in that one or in that one. I'm not sure if it would fit in there, but if it did, that would be a really ideal place to put it. So I'm just going to measure that quickly and that is 300 millimetres. By the looks of it, that will fit in there quite nicely. Let's just check the length. So that is quite long. It's about 500. So uh, that would fit in there, but I'd have to take the back out and it would just stick out the back. But yeah, if we could get that to fit in there, that would be awesome. But for now, I want to just get it all up and running. How do we open the door? I feel like we should probably read the instructions, to be honest, before I start messing about with it. This does come with a six month warranty as well, which is great. So we've got some instructions here, which is probably going to take me a little while to figure out. So. I think I'll have a little read through this, get it all set up, and then I'll show you it working. Okay, so it's currently the next day now. I realized that there was a few things that I had to buy first before I could get the machine up and running. So I've had to buy two five litre water bottles, a measuring syringe, measuring jug, and some mineral water. Now I've got everything I need now to get it going. There has been a slight change of plan as well. I originally wanted to put it in there. I thought that would be a nice place to put it. But this machine, I think, is quite manual. You have to keep changing discs in and out quite regularly if you want to do a lot of them. And I thought if I put it down there, I'm going to be bending down all the time. And I don't really want to be doing that. So what I've done is 
I went and picked up this from Facebook Marketplace today, which is like an old sort of chest of drawers. I got that for £25, but that fits in there really, really well. Um, the machine now sits on top of that, and this is a perfect standing height for me to open and close it. And also, that's now given me loads of drawers to put all my stuff in. I've got all my spare cases in there, more in there, and I've got cables and all sorts in there. It's very, very handy to have that. Before I built this testing station, I did have some massive draw units here and they were very, very handy for keeping stuff in. And then when I built this, all that storage kind of disappeared. So that has worked an absolute treat. I have also fitted this. This was inside my van, but I don't use it anymore. So I've just put the instructions in there because until I learn how to use this, I'm gonna probably need these quite a lot. I've also laminated them because I'm guessing that the disc cleaning process might be a little bit messy. So I don't want them getting all damaged. So that will just live up there. This unit's great as well, because one of these bottles has to go here and it has this thing. I'm not really sure what that is, some sort of filter. So you fill that up with water, that goes in there. So that can just stay there. And then this pipe here is a drip tube. So all the water that comes in from that one has to come out somewhere. So that's why I've got two of these. And when it's turned on, I'll just stick that tube in there. So all my drainage will go into that one. And then they both just store away there, nice and neat when I'm not using them. I've also got a bit of space here that I can put all my compounds and stuff on. And then yeah, all of these little sanding pads and that, they can all live in there. So really pleased with that. But now I've got everything I need, I'm now gonna try and get this up and running. So I thought I'd just show you how this actually works. So in here you have these pad holders and they have magnets on the back. And then on top of them, you have the actual pads, the sanding pads. So these ones are different grits of sandpaper, coarse and fine. And that's like a buffing polishing wheel. So they fix to that using Velcro and then they just literally clip in like that. And then when you want to change them, you just pull them off. It's quite clever how that works really. That closes like that. So with all those in, all I've got to do now is fill the, there's a tube at the back. I need to fill it with a compound, fill that with water. And then also you have to put water additive in that as well and then we're up and running okay so this is what the machine looks like on the back so the first thing i need to do is fill that up with some compound can i do this without spilling it you don't get a lot in there now one downside to this machine i've heard is that all these consumables aren't very cheap and you do have to buy them fairly regularly. That tube needs to go all the way down to the bottom. I think that's okay. So that just sits in there. All right, the next thing I need to do is put four liters of water into there. I think to save me some time for next time, I'm actually just gonna mark that. So I can just pour it straight in there next time. Okay, the next thing I need to put 20 milliliters of this water additive into there. That doesn't fit in there, so I'm gonna have to pour it in here. I'm not entirely sure what that actually does. I think it's some sort of lubricant actually. That stuff seems quite oily. That can go up here. That goes in there. You can put this down there. Get that in there. Turn it on. Okay, so with that all done, I think we're ready to go. 
In the instructions, it says to use a lightly scratched disc for the first cycle. So I just found this PS2 game and it's got some light scratches on it, but that shouldn't need too much work. So let's start off with that. And then I think all we have to do is close the door, press the number three, Time says 40 seconds, so I'm guessing that's how long it takes. I must say, it's quite a noisy machine. It's gonna do my head in having this on all day. Okay, that's gone back up to 30 seconds for some reason. I don't know if it does three cycles, so if you, depending how bad the disc is, you can either press one, two, three, four, or five. So I'm guessing I've pressed three, that means it does three different cycles. So that took 40 seconds. That's gonna, I think, take 30. And then once that gets to zero, I'm guessing it'll do another one, which will be the last one. I'm not too sure, but we'll see. See if this goes back up again now. Yeah. So I think we're on the third cycle now, third and final. So I think once that gets down to zero, that should be done. And I think, ooh, that scared me. Oh, that is looking good. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> that is absolutely mint. Wow. I'm well impressed with that. Okay, so with that done, I'm now gonna try it on a very scratched disc. So, I've got a copy of FIFA 08 here, which we're going to test out. And as you can see, that is very heavily scratched. So let's chuck that in. See if we can rescue that. And I'll put that one on a four. So while that's doing its job, I thought I'd just show you these. If you watched my last video, you would have seen me picking up all of this. This isn't even all of it. I've got hundreds more games to do in there, in there. There's absolutely hundreds of them. But these ones are all the ones that are worth five pounds or more each. So this machine has come just in time really, because now whenever I'm selling games on eBay, I can make every disc look like brand new and I can be charging top money for everything now whereas before if i had a scratched disc i'd have to mention that it's scratched in the listing and then say that it's acceptable condition and then list it for the lowest price but i can now use that and list everything for the highest price right let's have a little look at that oh my god wow Honestly, that is so impressive. That's got every single scratch out. That is absolutely minty. Just to prove it's the same game, FIFA 08. That is really amazing. Okay, the next thing I want to try is a PS1 disc. Now, because these have black discs, I've heard apparently it can leave like little micro scratches on them. So I've got this, which is Alien Resurrection, which I got from the pickup in my last video. I thought that was a fodder game. Turns out it's worth about 90 pounds. But as you can see, this is also quite scratched. PS1 games often are really scratched. So let's stick that in. I think I'm gonna put that on a four as well. We'll see what that comes out like. All right, so look at that. Wow, another minty, minty disc. There is a little bit of compound around the edges, but I can wipe that off. But I cannot see a single scratch on that. Not even micro scratches. I must say it is quite handy having this light directly above this machine, because I can see every little detail on the discs. But yeah, that has come out very, very nice. So I just wiped all the compound off the edges and that's what it looks like now. Absolutely mint, not a single scratch. I can't see any micro scratches either. 
So that's come out even better than I was expecting. Just to prove it's the same disc, Alien Resurrection. So that can now go back in the case. I'm also going to clean the case up, get the sticker off. I'm going to use a little bit of T-cut to get the scratches out of the case. And then I can sell that for top money. Okay, so this machine does also do Blu-ray discs. So I've just found a Blu-ray disc here, which does have some scratches on it. Now I think it is harder to get these scratches out of Blu-rays. Luckily Blu-rays tend to not be that badly scratched anyway. But in order to use Blu-rays on this, you have to take out the yellow pad and then you put this violet pad on there. I think this is the only one that works with Blu-ray discs. And then with the door open, you hold down that button till it says BD. So let's stick that in and see if we can get them out. Go for a four again. Mm, yeah, that's improved it but there are still some scratches on that. As I say, I think it does struggle to get uh, scratches out of Blu-rays. So I'm gonna stick that in again, I think, and see if we can get them out after a second run. All right, see what it looks like now. Yeah, I mean, it's improved again. There are still some scratches on that. It is a little bit better. The problem with Blu-rays as well, I think the protective layer on the disc is quite thin. So if you do this too much, you can actually make the disc not work. I'm gonna stick that in again, see if we can get them out a bit more. And then uh, I think we'll have to test it and see if it still works. Okay, that has now been through three times. And that actually has done a pretty good job now. I can still very faintly see them scratches, but that's looking pretty good now. I think one more time, that would be pretty mint. But I think the risk is, if I do it again, it might not work. But just for testing purposes, I'm going to try that one more time, and then we'll see if it still works. Okay, so that has now been through the machine four times on the highest setting. And that is looking pretty mint now. Can't actually see any scratches on it. So that has done a pretty good job. It's taken me about 20 minutes just to do this one disc because I've had to put it in so many times. But the question is, does it still work? So let's stick that in the PlayStation. And hopefully, still works well it's coming up and that is all working so I'm pretty impressed with that considering most other machines can't do blu-rays at all it did take a lot longer to do it but yeah you do run the risk of actually breaking the game entirely if you do do it too much you can also do GameCube games on this machine but you do need to buy an adapter so I've just gone on their website and you can get one for about five pounds that's a lot cheaper than I was expecting it to be, to be honest, so I'm going to order one of them. Okay, so it's been a few days now since I started filming this video. This machine has been on pretty much non-stop since I bought it, and I'm absolutely loving this thing. I am currently working on going through my entire collection and making all the discs mint. This is probably not even half of my actual collection. This is all stuff that I've picked up since I started doing this. It's one of the perks of this job is that you get to collect video games completely for free. I have certain rules when it comes to keeping stuff for my collection. It has to be boxed, complete and in very good condition. Otherwise, I would end up keeping everything and I wouldn't make any money. But so far, I've done all the PS1 games. All the discs on all of them are absolutely mint. They all look like that. I'm absolutely over the moon with this. 
I've been wanting to do this for such a long time. Now it probably doesn't make much business sense to be running my whole collection through it for myself because it does cost me money to put things in this machine. You do have to pay for pads and compound and water additive. It cost me probably 40, 50p per disc I think. But I just can't help myself. That machine's sitting there and all those games are sitting there just asking to be fixed. So I had to do it. All the games that you did see there before that were on the table, they've now all been fixed and photographed and listed. I have sold quite a lot of them already. One thing I have been doing as well on my listings is including a picture of the discs after they've been resurfaced. I think by doing that, that's really going to help my sales because those pictures are then appealing to all the collectors out there that care about the condition of discs. I am also charging top prices for all my games now. One, because I need to recuperate obviously the money that I've put into this machine. But two, the whole point of buying this machine was so that I can make this mint and charge higher prices. Those photos I think have been working because as I say, I have sold quite a lot of them already. I know that me personally, if I was gonna buy games on eBay, I would be searching through all the different listings and then trying to find the ones that have mint discs because I'm very fussy about discs. I would never just buy a random game without knowing what the disc condition is like. So I do think that having this is really gonna help me gain more sales. Okay, so my final thoughts on this machine, I'm extremely impressed with it. I'm so glad that I bought it. The finish that it gives is absolutely amazing. It's really easy to use as well. The only downside that I would say for this machine is the cost of the consumables. If you go on their website and look at how much it costs for new pads, new compound and water additive, it is really expensive. So I now have a 2,640 pound hole in my pocket that I need to try and recuperate. So if you've got a load of discs that you want repairing for yourself and you don't want to fork out that kind of money for a machine like this I am going to be offering a disc repair service if you are interested in that send me a message on Instagram link will be down in the description also if you buy a lot of games yourself and you end up with a load of scratch discs that you can't sell because they're scratched I would be interested in buying them as well so if you want to save up piles of them and then send them in to me I will buy them off you because obviously I can fix them and then resell them myself if you're not already please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future content like this give the video a like on your way out as well it helps me out massively and as always I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one